Good afternoon, everyone. So uh, we are here uh, for the class debate on brain is a computer or brain is not a computer, and we are on the side of brain is not a computer. I'm uh, Swati. I'll be presenting uh, uh, the work of my team and our viewpoints with uh, my friend, colleague, and teammate Sunjay Ko. So this is my team. Uh, Joey, uh, Sunjay, Sweta, Agunmeet, and Ruan. So I'll be, uh, we will try to uh, convey all of their opinions. Uh, there are a multifaceted points of views for on uh, brain is a computer or not. So uh, there is all of these uh, fields of studies going on. And uh, there is behavioral economics point of view, there is evolutionary and biological science point of view, cognitive science, we have psychology, brain inspired computing, intelligent behavior, neuroscience, and all this. So uh, basically, uh, to understand the functionalities of brain, we should try to understand what each of these viewpoints have to say. And for that, we first need to understand the mysteries of our brain. So I uh, will start with some of the questions. Um, what and how thinking is generated? How do we start thinking? How, how is our thinking motivated? And what and how attraction is generated? And uh, what makes people confirm like the right to know uh, what went wrong? So why do people confirm with others? How, what and how consciousness is generated? and uh, personality is constituted. What causes Alzheimer's? Although there is work going on in these fields, but uh, these are the mysteries of brain which are yet not solved, and we would like to understand this. So brain is uh, full of uh, all these mysteries, but we have not yet understood all of these mysteries. So um, coming to the neuromorphic computing, so the neuromorphic engineering is the branch of engineering who are working on uh, understanding neuroscience uh, with electrical and digital signals. So how can they map neurons? So our, uh, the recent uh, study by MIT uh, came up with this uh, headline. Let's go with the title of uh, the article. Engineers design artificial synapse for brain on a chip hardware. <laughs> <laughs> I, so, I can't spell artificial synapse. Artificial synapse. Artificial synapse. Artificial synapse. Uh, we have our uh, standpoint on this. It's very uh, naive to claim that you have designed a chip. It is very really naive. Uh, it is very naive to claim that you have worked on a chip. You have designed a chip which can do all the works that computer uh, brain can do without understanding the what's and how's of brain. And um, the what's and how's of brain are not fully narrated. Wouldn't uh, you argue that all that matters is uh, what, uh, I mean, how does it matter, right? I mean, you could emulate, think about in simulation system or emulation system, so far as external behavior is exactly the same as uh, the brain uh, that you can still claim without doing exactly the way the brain does, right? Yes, yeah, so that is why we need to understand how our behaviors uh, is what we are seeing. No, but obviously, is that do you really have to uh, repeat, uh, you know, uh, 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 <coughs> recreate how part of the brain, right? uh, you know, it, it, you can do what brain can do and say that it's a uh, brain. So, uh, um, when we just uh, decide on something, uh, we, we, we think that our brain is taking the decision on a blink of an eye. But uh, the sociology part of it, uh, people have worked on defining the taking of a decision into multiple steps on why. So we'll be discussing about the details of these steps mm -hmm. in our uh, slides. So um, yeah. Uh, as I told, the human brain is far more complex in learning and executing these tasks than just uh, some algorithmic set of instructions. Uh, uh, I'll try, try to start with the cognitive science. What do cognitive scientists have to say on this? And uh, we don't, uh, we are not pointing out everything out there, but we'll try to focus on uh, 
uh, the work by Daniel Kahneman. He he, this guy is a biased guy. So we stand by the argument uh, along with him that uh, biases are embedded in our culture and language of the society. So our decisions are very biased, but it depends on how we perceive our culture. And it is very unique to every person, <coughs> to every brain, how they are perceiving their culture. So our brain creates our own subjective and social reality from our own perceptions. The and question it's very different. Is, the question is, how do we want to interpret the question brain is a computer or brain is not a computer? This, we, I didn't, we are, are you going to distinguish between brain and the humanity and the human, you know, you know uh, being? Because it's, it's, you know, nobody is claiming that a computer is a human or, uh, or, or human is a, com you know, so, so nobody is doing that. They're only talking about potentially computer being a brain. And um, or, uh, you know, or, or brain being, a, how is it? Yeah. yeah, computer behaving like a brain, computer doing, you know, replacing brain. Yeah. What what that implies simply um, uh, that uh, the decision uh, that could simply imply decision making. I mean, you need you could, you could, maybe maybe people are interpreting saying there is some data, uh, just like our brain is exposed to some of the data of sort whatever form or through our senses. And we make uh, some decisions, we take some actions. To the extent that a computer can do the same, that then you actually said, well, uh, brain is a computer. Uh, because I can, in computer, uh, recreate everything the brain can does. A brain, a computer can be as powerful as brain. Right? So, um, and there are clearly um, things that computers do that brains can't do. Right? We know that. There is, not, there is little argument and we can clearly come with the exa you know, um, um, uh, examples of that. So the question now simply remains, is brain more powerful than computer and that uh, decision making of brain is so unique that we cannot recreate it in a computer? The bias aspect of it, is it purely, uh, um, you know, so you, are you arguing that that is purely part of the brain uh, aspect of it or that is part of the human um, uh, being, which is not just the brain. Yeah, so uh, there is work uh, also on modeling the cultural bias. So um, recently, I think uh, in last year in December, there was some work in um, AI capturing the cultural bias. But um, how uh, the uh, human brain or hu humanity basically is kept, uh, so every action is uh, defined by our behavior and our behavior is again decided by a lot of other factors involved so which ultimately pine up to uh, make the final decision so there are a lot of factors involved instead of just a one way channel uh, in the decision making process so we uh, in this argument we are just trying to figure out what are these different channels or motivations in the final decision making process of our brain because uh, ultimately it's the decision that we are taking but what are the motivational factors behind it and uh, that's where brain and computer gets differentiated and also one thing about our brain is that if we know that bias exists we can train our brain to avoid it so this is the powerful things also about so we can train our computer to avoid bias or we can train the computer to yeah, be but biased. They need us to train our computer to if a computer has bias, the computer itself doesn't know that it has a bias. Why so not? We can create uh, some concept in computer and uh, knowledge representation called uh, a bias and uh, you know that will do that. In fact, um, um, computers can be you know, programmed to think that they are, to, to know that what biases they have. Yes, so we have, we are the one who are programming and giving them that you have these biases. Mm. But uh, human brain can come up and evolve with uh, new biases based on their own perception of the situation and the problem. So uh, then uh, we have also studied into some part of evolutionary um, algorithm like evolutionary biology. So how does uh, our brain evolve in different situations? Culturally. And 
biases can be like each and every individual has a different sort of biases. So how can you program like you are going to program? It comes all upon the personal like personalization. Like so, how many programs you are gonna make like for each and every? Test? So, so let us go back to the uh, you know the uh, video or the film that we had seen. What was that? Uh, Andromeda? No. What was that uh, character? Ah. Uh, huh? was the name of the character. Okay. So, the operating so there are a couple of, uh, you know, there, there are books and movies. I remember uh, myself uh, having a book during my studies at BITS uh, where there was, um, uh, you know, a computer that interacts with the human and then learns all aspects of the human being bias, including the fact that the computer develops the, you know, the notion of love. It understands uh, the computer uh, takes the um, a persona of a female and uh, develops, uh, you know, what the, that it or she, uh, you know, uh, what, 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 a, what a woman, you know, have in terms of uh, falling for a guy. But we are actually, actually programming the computer, right, for that person. No, they learn to learn themselves. There's another movie called Ex Machine. Yeah. Which does the same. It's a robot and she's learning from human interaction. So the point is that, uh, so, so the, 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 the argument here is that uh, humans are trained. Uh, we are exposed to stimuli, we are exposed to things we observe and from that we learn. What makes us, uh, why is it not possible for us to, for, for a computer program to also learn in the same way from different things? Uh, for example, uh, so, uh, the argument, like the movie saw the movie Trading Places, where it uh, argues that uh, your environment plays a huge role, not just your genetics. And uh, they take a guy from, uh, you know, uh, who is a beggar and he becomes a you know, worsted guy, right? By, because uh, some other people change the environment for him. And um, so, if that, because of, you know, because this, guy was exposed to environment, uh, he could now, you know, become, change his role and become guy on Wall Street and behave differently. Same thing, the argument is that, well, these computer, computers can be, uh, you know, uh, you can have computers now or in near future or in the distant future that would learn and take two computers and one is exposed and put in this environment and uh, Nini talks to that uh, every day and the other one is put in this environment and you know Amelia, uh, Emily talks to this one every day and they both uh, come different, you know, they have beha different behavior, they are different sub persona over the period of time. Um, but how again like how the computer will by default pick like okay I should take this uh, from this environment, I should take this from this environment, I will come uh, with some Does the child pick uh, that when the child is born? <laughs> But that's now, yeah. Like child doesn't, you know. So child has a family, and uh, the family, or uh, typically, and or whatever and who child is adopted. Learns by like uh, they pick, but uh, the same a computer should learn from uh, whatever uh, environment uh, it is exposed to. It's a matter. It, it could be a factor of environment. So the biases that computer A develops will be different based on the kind of biases that computer A observes. And the bias B, uh, you know, computer B uh, is exposed to very different sort of people and develops uh, very different biases. Um, but who will uh, tell that pick what from this bias and pray? No, it's like child. Child is not, you know, did not, you didn't tell child. Child was just exposed to this thing and they picked uh, from whatever exposures the child had. But I think we still uh, have to uh, give weightage to uh, the bias selections. I mean, which we don't do for the children. Like, I, I mean... So why can't computers... Uh, uh, no, 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 no. You don't have to give weight to computers. Uh, in fact, there are a lot of programs where the weights are learned automatically. So, if, if we talk about uh, interaction, uh, brain, human brain, uh, let, let's say a feeling of uh, stress. So, uh, humans, they, inter they can interact with uh, strangers and still... Uh, get rid of the emotion stress and convert it into peace or calmness whereas uh, computers uh, cannot interact with a completely new algorithm and learn from it why not 
so they they are uh, learning english like, uh, there is work on uh, similar kind of uh, um, tasks shared tax algorithms but how do we make a computer learn from a completely stranger algorithm and then yeah, it affects its decision uh, why not as possible how i can uh, i can train a system on a one particular uh, domain and i can try to apply that system in another domain that has little or you cannot say that it cannot work it will but work it, very yeah. but it's not very, on the very domain very itself yeah. there are a lot of other factors involved but i'm quoting on your question that you say that it won't work it will no, work no 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 i'm saying and that how do we do that can we do that because all these fields that we uh, pointed out in the beginning of our presentation everyone has an impact on the final uh, decision making or the final bias so how do we uh, include all of these biases together to finally come up with a decision making model so i mean if you the fact that it, it says that you haven't figured out the way on how to do all those that doesn't necessarily mean that you cannot do that okay so so, so let's 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 get one thing clear right uh, the question is not that to can, can is is question is not to say that show me um, you know computer today that is uh, equal to brain yeah. that's not the question right mm -hmm. uh, the question is uh, is there anything that is in the brain that can't be done by computer Qu question is uh, can't won't the computer be as powerful and uh, won't it eventually in whether it is in five years or whether it is 1947 the you know different people have different dates for so called singularity and that the whole po idea is that the, the, the brain is uh, computer is more powerful than brain or humans right um, um that um, um do you remember uh, i showed you you know photograph of uh, ashok goel right and uh, he had this uh, you know agent that uh, you know basically the whole class ai class did not figure out that there was an agent they all thought is a human for the whole semester right so uh, that's now it, the question is not whether computer can do that or not today because i i when i started programming computer computer did not have any memory uh, you know i had to put all the data on the cards and the computer would only do computation reading the date both the data and program had to be supplied today you can have your data already stored in the computer today the data can be obtained through a web services that is on some other thing on the cloud or some other place on the internet of things so do you know look at the progression and the rate of progression is even grown up can you conceive of anything that brain does um, as something that can potentially be done uh, on on uh, on a machine that is the question if uh, there is nothing is there a so is there a magic that we do is there something um, that is in the brain that we can conclusively argue that it can't be on a computer that is the question so again uh, and that is a question you have to prove brain doesn't have consciousness sorry computer doesn't have consciousness where brain has it knows who am i what is in the world i am around no so why can't brain uh, why computer not have a co consciousness and identity computer can have identity the you know i mean Uh, again that is a fiction the movies that we saw but you know those uh, those uh, you know um, computer programs developed uh, identity of their own they they they, they develop liking of their own uh, and what what does it is that a, can you tell me show me there is some object as, a, as that is so unique about consciousness or is it simply some form of something that is some data and some computation see the argument it could be that uh, the consciousness the emotion the biases are just some you know valency or some data it's some you know i i would represent this way or that way i would uh, put color, this color or that color those are all choices i can make and why can't computers make that choice and i will call when there is this electricity and this kind of stuff i'll call this uh, this bias when it is something else i'll call this other bias it's a label you suppose you have a uh, a feeling or an emotion is that so unique about you suppose you are angry and manas is angry is this the same or is it different 
Only thing we, you did was that you labeled something that you have something as anger, and he labels we labeled something that he has as anger. And the only common thing we found was to label anger. In reality, what exactly his anger is is very different than your anger. Right? And in reality, um, for exactly, let's say that uh, we um, uh, come up with an idea, let's say um, you are angry at um, uh, this uh, thing that, you know, essentially doesn't allow, um, um, uh, you know, uh, a woman to uh, be as free as a guy, right? Naturally, you are you you are a woman and you you are angry at that thing. I am a feminist. I also am an angry at that. Now, does it mean we have exactly the same in our thing? It's something. We agree that we both are uh, unhappy about that, or we both angry about something. Well, why can't we have computers also? You know have the same attitude if we if we tell them that this is bad or this is wrong at the end of the day uh, you know you grew up and I grew up in certain environment and we develop a feeling that no I mean the a boy and a uh, girl uh, should have exactly the same uh, opportunities but there are other you know persons who are brought up in uh, uh, you know uh, some rural area somewhere or their culture simply uh, you know doesn't think that that is right for whatever reason, maybe they're looking at, you know, 15,000 years old uh, thing, or they're looking at Bible, or they're looking at whatever, Quran, or they're looking at uh, some Sastra, where they put, um, you know, uh, they, they made the distinction with them, that no, woman can't do this. Woman can't sit a havan. And they will believe that. Right? So now I have two computers. I put one in this environment that you and I are in, and they will be biased, they will be thinking the same way you are. And I'll put the other computer in the other environment, and they will learn from that way, from their environment. The argument is, why can't you? So, uh, based on uh, this example, mm -hmm. um, uh, we need to understand what are the reasons that are motivating Usha to be angry on that particular topic. And what are the circumstances that made you angry on that particular topic? So that will may impact, have an impact on your decision on a different topic. Maybe, uh, I mean, uh, so uh, we can't come up with a, a defined problem that, okay, the, we, we train uh, you and we train Usha and you have the same decision on this particular problem. But uh, the path you follow to reach to that decision that is different and that is influenced by a lot of other factors which might have both of you have different opinions on different problems. So you cannot generalize that uh, uh, you and Ushars um, have the same uh, opinion. I mean uh, you have the uh, same algorithm trained you to give the same decision. What is the, what is the uh, formal word for this? What is the formal word for what she argue, she's arguing about? Come on, guys. What is your question? <laughs> <laughs> she made an argument. What, what is that called? Deterministic. Right? That's the argument. Yeah? Okay. Well, let's say um, what you are now trying to say correct me if I'm wrong, is that we humans are not deterministic. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> we humans are not deterministic. Okay. Well, uh, okay, uh, but why, um, uh, so, so you're saying that uh, maybe there isn't something in our, you know, our genetic coding. Uh, you know, even when exposed to the same thing, uh, there is a genetic coding that um, She's a female, I'm a male, that itself may be a different thing. Uh, that's because I'm associated differently, I'm treated differently by society, and she's differently. Uh, it may be that there's a genetic differences, uh, and, and that those kind of things are there, right? 
So the, okay. the claim that the gene plays a role in uh, a person uh, having chance of uh, getting affected by Alzheimer's disease is there, but it's not that strong to conclude that gene or hereditary uh, influences have, uh, like they are not sure that these are the factors which can conclude, make the person affected with. Well, but then I can give you the counter example, BRAC2 gene. Uh, in, in the case of breast cancer, that is uh, pretty much uh, proven that uh, that is a very heavy uh, you know, influence of that part of it. So there are, in the case of Alzheimer, the genomic uh, you know, thing uh, is, the lineage is not so, uh, uh, so uh, strong, although it may be there. Uh, and uh, in the case of uh, you know, some other disease, that it is highly genetic. But uh, Alzheimer's is something which is related to forgetfulness, or uh, that is some functionality of our yeah. brain memory. Uh, some people say Alzheimer is all about, uh, you know, having that, uh, you know, uh, 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 graying uh, and there's some, uh, you know, junk uh, that comes up, right? I mean, the, some things doesn't wash out, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, our brain does not clean up all the junk that is in our, uh, you know, brain. Uh, our bloods can re can't remove that and then become scale. And that reduces the, you know, uh, the signals passing in the neuron and that reduces, you know, that, that leads to all the different effects that there are, right? No? So computers can also get old and, you know, <laughs> the cooling systems can dis disintegrate and so on and so forth. But human is not deterministic because even in gene, right, even though it has a heavy weight in causing cancer, but it is not 100% causing cancer. That's why you have probabilistic uh, uh, yeah. knowledge <laughs> you know, star, you know, techniques. Yeah, That's so we are trying to make computers which can help us, but not which can uh, completely imitate brain. Why not? Also, that, that, that is the point, because even uh, neuroscientists, they don't understand the complete functionalities of brain. Let's see. Uh, if, you, if you can see the, all the functionalities of our brain, as uh, studied by neuroscientists, there are questions still left to answer on uh, how or what functions are taking care of these uh, parts okay, of Okay, then, then I can define the argument. I can say that you want to argue that uh, computer is not a brain because we don't understand brain fully. And I would say, well, uh, as much as we understand the brain, you can, uh, that, that, you know, uh, that can be computerized. So we, we and so it's simply a matter of understanding more of brains yeah. It has nothing to do with computer. If you understand what brain does, we can do it in computer. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, so we, hum, our brain can uh, think about future. Like, uh, we think about future. But can we make uh, computers uh, think Why about not? future? Uh, well, of course not. Why not? How By can we do that? you mean predictions, no. right? So yeah, yeah, you are doing predictions. Better. No, thinking about your future. So what are the factors that uh, motivates you or your thoughts about your future? So that so is a different thing. Model, it's right? it's ah. like I do not want my computer to feel stressed and all those things yeah. because that yeah. is just the behavior that I don't want to clone. So this thinking about myself is something I do not want to program in my computer. So that then again you are uh, 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 giving these biases to your computer, you but can you? Oh, that's Brain wonderful! Now, 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 you just admitted. Yeah. No, uh, you know, I'm uh, if you can give bias to the computer, <laughs> you have uh, you made computer the you know, as powerful as it needs to be. So I mean, you are giving to good, some to a particular brain. biases. So brain again is not a computer because brain can get stressed. But you are saying that you don't that's, want to. That's a part of brain stressed. that has never been tried to um, emulate in machine because it's it's not necessary. I mean. If you want to, probably you can study about it and and, uh, and and do it. But just because we don't want to do it uh, in machine doesn't mean we can't. Yeah. No, no, the, the, in, fact, in fact, the argument seems to be going as that computer is more powerful than brain. Brain yeah. will deteriorate, deteriorate and yeah. brain will you know, get tired and brain will, you know, uh, will age and will start losing things. And computer can continue to do that, even in, continue to improve upon it. No, but to the extent you want it, it is. Yes, I want to get one example in actual life. We have a 
for example, um, if we go to psychologists, for one hour, psychologists will listen to us. That kind of, you are presenting the knowledge. So we are giving information in all past life, problems in life, and what we should do in future. So for first one hour, for example, he does, she or he doesn't talk, and she just get input. So uh, similar to that, and after that, she start advising according to her knowledge, and uh, her output come up, up with some solution, okay? Similar to, we have, similar to that, we have online tests or uh, self-tests. For example, in case if you, have, you, if you answer to 100 questions in the computer, same like psychologists, um, <coughs> there is some uh, kind of the similar question. Sometimes when I compare both of them, the same actually. And sometimes uh, even computer can, up, can come up with a better uh, interpretation. That's why I, uh, I'm defending of what she said that um, all is about knowledge representation in my mind. But in case if we present well knowledge, even computer can come up with better results. So uh, then uh, it will uh, uh, depend on the questions that uh, you are designing. So that's your brain giving some particular questions. But what happens if in a scenario you don't know what questions to frame? We, do you want to claim that you are going to model a computer which will learn to uh, frame the questions for you? Is that the claim you are making? Yes. So according to the knowledge that, for example, the psychologist he had in past in college or wherever, she observed some knowledge about the human right, human behavior and all that. So according to that knowledge, she, she's come up with some consultation uh, or some guide or whatever. So similarity with this, so somebody designed this tool, and uh, we actually like a, like we are training computer to answer this type of question. But this is somehow I feel it's similar after that. But uh, I, I, I will uh, lead this discussion to the next uh, slide, which is pretty much relevant. And uh, let's try to see what we have points coming out in this discussion. So why do people help each other? And even when they are in a situation of hurting themselves. So um, uh, th this is a empathy altruism uh, hypothesis. Uh, and we, uh, we are trying to here understand that uh, uh, what are the factors that lead. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, again, at the end of this flowchart, uh, Someone is helping someone else, but there are two perspectives to this. As of now, there can be many perspectives. We are just talking on two perspectives. So one is of altruism, another is of egoistic. So again, that depends. Your decision is same. You are helping another person, but the reason why you are helping the other person, uh, one can help because of some empathetic concern, and the type of uh, motive here is altruism uh, to re reduce the other person's distress. Whereas uh, uh, someone can, uh, the other person can have personal distress and some egoistic concern to help the other person in need. So um, here, although the decision is same, so we argue that uh, the concepts of morality, empathy, and uh, reciprocal altruism play a role uh, in decision making, but we are against that computers can be programmed to capture uh, the social relations, influences, and exhibit altruistic or egoistic motive. So how can you de design to make your computer say that, okay, I did it because of my altruistic behavior, or I did it because of my egoistic behavior. That's the kind so, of thing game theory models, yes. right? So, uh, game, game theory, theory model they also kind of the goal is to maximize the profit. So the goal is to maximize the profit. But if we look at this, even if one person they would make different decisions based on the different situation. Yeah. So you can yeah. model those different situations. And uh, based on the model data that you have, your machine can learn that behavior if necessary. Yeah, if you can, but the thing is, if you look at our environment, it's 
too complicated for a person to model everything into the computer. So, so let's say that there are uh, two players who are uh, top in their uh, sports, but uh, uh, and they are competing against each other. So one uh, of the top players got gets injured and something, uh, but the other player has a chance from the opponent team who is also a top player to either help this player or not help this player. Now, what motivates the other player to help this player? knowing that maybe helping this player might have a negative impact on uh, his or her career. So uh, can we define or can we program uh, these questions like whether this player is going to help the other player by uh, you know, taking risk on his own career or not? But so, this, is, this can be actually learned uh, in the history of that person so that decision is going to be made based on the experience that this person had before. So he learned that actual behavior through experiences and these experiences taught that person uh, to make that decision. So you can do the same actually for, for a computer. You can teach that computer uh, that kind of uh, experiences. So, uh, and so that that computer can make that decision as well. Yeah, so. I, I agree. Uh, so, but this particular example that I came up with was an incident uh, which was, uh, I don't remember of it right now, but I can uh, give it to you later on. So uh, this particular player had a record of uh, like uh, aggressive player, but that player ended up helping the other player by taking risk at its own career and it became a very uh, big issue in the sports uh, news. So. If the player has been uh, an aggressive player, why and what situation motivated that player to so altruistic behavior and helping the other and um, going against uh, the record or the experience? But there is all. It's not hundred percent all time. Yeah. I know it's not hundred percent all time. That's why brain. Uh, um, I mean, you can you can only. A computer program, a brain, a computer, you can fill uh, some programs which is like 100% correct, right? You, you are saying that you want to train your computer based on the experiences. But that, for example, when you create a model uh, in a computer, still that model is going to be probabilistic, so every decision has a probability, so uh, it's not purely 100% all the time. Yes, yeah, so but we can computer can it provide the explanation to us like why we have chosen this. Like, mm -hmm. like it, suppose you have the ninety percent of the cases when the player is aggressive, right? And ten percent, like even less than ten percent, right? Mm -hmm. So, what does any of the probabilistic model? What do you think? What what is the output of it? Obviously, they will be biased. And now, can it provide the explanation to us like why? why he ha or the computer has chosen that answer. Can yeah, they do actually, that? Actually, there are self-explanation models in AI, uh, which are currently under development. So yeah, they can. They can provide an explanation of why a situation occurred or why something has happened during the time or something like that. Uh, is it uh, currently? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is in the field of computer science, which we are working on. Yeah. I, I mean, it's not currently developed, but then it's growing exponentially. Yeah, so, so all, all these factors are being taken take into account, right? That that is the point. But yeah, when yeah. Then humans can't explain the why, even if they do, you're not sure whether it's correct. But at least somebody can like if I'm doing some of the action, like I can explain, I can give my opinion. That, that is your opi exactly that's your opinion. Yeah, that's that's, and, that's not but, probably correct. And first of all, it's like quite very difficult, like that situation is going to be occur and we have that computer that will okay take the decision for that situation. Yeah, it, it it's all happens under goal driven autonomy, all that research focuses on what you're talking about, yeah. There are systems which are under development, yeah. It is possible for a computer to do all those kind of things, explanation and uh, expectations as well. And they also choose goals if there are a couple of goals, and it also does the decision based on cost benefit analysis or maybe some other algorithm. Yeah. For each and every situation that can occur. 
in certain way. If tomorrow somebody decides to make use of computer as a clone to human, it doesn't mean it cannot be done. Unless there is something that can never be modeled. But the thing is, we can so, model everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, so that, that's yeah. the thing, right? That's if it. you prove yeah. that something cannot be modeled, then it's true that that is something that computer cannot do. What's the difference between means empty mission means nothing, no information in the mission and no information in the brain. If we clean whole information in the brain, so there are still like what's the difference if we clear everything the mean of uh, like we think whatever ourselves will go right if we clean everything okay you bring a very interesting point and just think about it this will give you some very good insight can you wipe off a machine of all the memories that it has can you wipe off your brain with every no. Uh, thing that the brain has observed at that point in time, can you see the brain? You know, can you make the brain go totally empty? Yeah. In any Alzheimer. individual, in any. <laughs> <laughs> Alzheimer. You know that the, at the yeah. end of the pages yeah. of Alzheimer, yeah. people yeah. forget how to swallow. Yeah. yeah you know, uh, Alzheimer. It is that I'm talking about. So you know, uh, a functioning brain. That that is that is a um, that is a uh, disease or machine fault. <laughs> Other things. I'm talking about, uh, you know, can any one of us here right now, uh, you know, I can, can, I can take any machine there and I can say, I'm wiping you off, I'm rebooting uh, with, uh, you, know, uh, you know, operating system uh, at the start and nothing else will be there. Can you make anyone of here forget everything that he or she has and learned we or remembered? claim that right now, but then... Why can't that be in future? How? <laughs> That's the point, right? That the point here is that, um, so when, you, when we want to argue that uh, brain is a computer, we basically want to say that anything I can conceive of brain doing, I can do in a computer. If you, you know, let's make sure that interpretation of the question, right? And now, uh, if uh, in the brain we say we can't wipe it off, and, uh, but in computer you can. You said anything that we can do in computer that we can do in brain. When you say brain is a computer, right? That's, that's the thing, argument. Or brain. brain is not a computer. Okay. So what, what do you have to argue to make prove your point? If you want to prove your point that brain is a computer, mm. then you say anything that I can do in brain, I can also replicate in computer. Okay. So um, wiping of memory happens in computer. Mm. It doesn't happen in brain. You said anything that I can do in brain, I should be able to do in computer. Mm. But this is the other way around. Yes, it is the other way around. Yeah. The question is, um, uh, what does it tell you about the argument one way or another? So, uh, is this I helpful? That then you are making argument that uh, computer is a brain. Uh, and, and, and I, I also think that uh, in this way, uh, it is more like the computer is more adaptable and changeable or something like that and it could be used again and again where the brain can also computer is better than a brain. You can start there, but that is a starting point. Yeah, sure. That's the thing you start and then we can go with, uh, you know, uh, things. So let's see when you come here, we'll, we'll, we'll start with that. We'll incorporate that in your thing if that's the point you got argue. Then we'll go from there, right? Okay, so what is it here that we can't do in a computer? So, uh, uh, our argument is uh, based on uh, uh, there, there is work going on in all of these fields, like the um, um, emotion analysis, uh, visual processing, speech processing and all. We are definitely uh, achieving uh, things by using computers, but 
the main point here comes is uh, how do you model perception like your own perception of a problem of a thing so you are going to model a computer and setting some uh, biases to it okay you are going to perceive this problem in this way but uh, human brain the perception evolves it changes um, maybe sometimes uh, it depends on an experience or a set of activities that has happened in experience and maybe sometimes it's an uh, incidental, accidental decision that changes. So what uh, triggers, uh, whether that's a series of events or whether just uh, it's just a minor, small event changing the perception. So uh, that's where uh, understanding a brain is different than a computer so and uh, yeah. yeah so actually if we look at brain we know that brain is the product in the evolution of culture and biology it's not just the survivor that it evolved the brain but also the culture that evolved the brain because we are the social animals and then we have this agricultural lifestyle that's why our brains help us to recognize the face, you know, the brains help us to bond with our family so that, you know, here it's not only increase our survival but also because of our culture. But if we look at the computers, computers, they, they don't interact with each other, like computers do not learn from computer-computer interactions. They, what Why they can't? Do? Robots can learn from each other's interactions. So by learning here, we mean, uh, again, that example that uh, we initially pointed out uh, about the bias. So uh, it, dip, uh, I mean, uh, uh, my brain doesn't even know in what situation, uh, what emotion of my brain can be uh, motivated by interacting with what kind of a person. But uh, if we are doing this to a computer, we are modeling it giving it some uh, prerequisites so uh, and uh, definitely uh, it doesn't have the ability so to so do you don't think that reinforcement learning is part is like uh, an example of that yeah so in uh, re reinforcement learning again we will be discussing about all these uh, terms so there are loopholes uh, of course uh, there are uh, this uh, shared task and re reinforcement learning uh, that we have worked on using our brain, but uh, still can they help us in learning or getting affected by other uh, human beings? Uh, but so yeah, let, let's see. Yeah, so actually when we imit when the human brains imitate each other because we are able to imitate because of these mirror neurons in our brain. So these mirror neurons is what responsible to simulate the situation in our brain without actually doing it. So because of this, we can simulate other people's situation and that's why we can know a human can understand another people's intent. So this is what we call intent projection because we are just simulate ourselves in their situation and based on how we feel about that, and we can understand how other people are feeling. And because of this, this is what um, causes us to have empathy. Uh -huh. So this is like a byproduct of mirror neurons. It's like putting ourselves in other people's shoes in the simulated situation. But of course, these things, you know, if these things could go backfire and Actually, there is one medical syndrome called Kuwat syndrome. So this is the syndrome where a husband, if their wife is pregnant, the husband would also have the symptoms of the pregnant woman. Yeah. So this is also so Kuwat syndrome is also known as the sympathetic pregnancy. So this is the mirror neurons. Uh, and uh, are the mirror neurons only in the in that we can feel empathy, or is it the only complete way? Yeah, I'll say yes. So now that we know that mirror neurons are the reason for empathy, then we can simulate that in a computer, right? Then one difference. 
it can simulate, but how? How? So yeah. our point is, uh, can mirror neurons be used to uh, model these kind of uh, syndromes which are affecting the brain? So that's a question. That's an open question. Although uh, we are making advancement in uh, like developing these new technologies. Yeah. So if we go further than understand people's intent, you know, actually humans has the capability of deception. So we can predict other intents, and then we could try to manipulate it using some stimulus you know for example in this book they say about the war of the Lawrence versus the Turks so the Turks is defending on the west side because they they predict that east side is a desert so they won't come from the east side because it is a very harsh environment but the Lawrence knew that they would think like that so what they do they just um, take a risk go from the east side and then that's how they defeat the parts. So this is how the mirror neurons and helps in modeling the human behavior and gives the human intelligence behavior. So one question. Is there anything for humans that comes without experience? I mean not not one don't consider one generation, consider evolution. Is there anything that comes to humans without any experience, without any learning? Today we are yeah, we are so good for grabbing things and grasping things. This all come from the evolution, right? This all, step by step it happened. We learn step by step, right? Yeah. So uh, can't we make this, like can't we replicate this, whatever we learn, like... Okay. Yeah. Can I answer your question when you ask, like, is there something which comes to the humans without learning? First thing, reflexes. Take a newborn baby, just play book game, and it will obviously close its eyes. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying from generations we learn those no. things. That's why it happened to us today. Those are no. not learned things. Exactly. Reflexes are not learned things. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Not even learning. from generations. Yeah. Take yeah. any living being, yes. you will have that. Any yes. living being. Even a dog or... Not the reflex. Yeah. Can you so, think that? So, so all all this came by like like that. They came. It's not. It's not by luck. Okay, yeah. that's what. Right. Let's even trace back to evolution, as you say. So Darwin said that we uh, we evolved from monkeys. Okay. Yeah. Just take a monkey even now, or even the adult those fans. Just play with it. It will have the reflexes. Yeah, but okay, reflexes is is not hard to model. Okay. The only thing that you need to do to model reflex is have a sensor and then write a program that behaves in a certain way. Or you can also model um, self-preservation strategy in a computer. And Again, we are modeling it. This machines and everything was basically invented or modeled or done uh, anything the, 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 in order to yeah. satisfy so, so, our needs, basically, yeah, yeah, but, when but, you boil it down. Yeah. So in that case, I don't think we will ever be modeling something which will be equal to us. You know, humans are the most dominant uh, creatures uh, in the world. When um, you think that's, about that's it. That's debatable, okay. but, yeah, but yeah. the point is, brain is a computer or not, right? From, so from that perspective, um, if we think self-preservation should be taught to computer, it can be. So a computer in that way can act like a brain. Um, why is it, how did it happen to us? That also not, it, it's not part of our brain. So it, it's, it's something else that is not why did it happen to us is something that we can't explain, but it's certainly not part of our dream. So as far as part of our dreams are concerned and what our dream is doing, um, yeah, we may be able to do it. Uh, but we have that natural ability, that is where we are standing out, right? So for missions, it doesn't have that natural ability. If we can define the natural ability and the... You can just like that compare everything, like yeah. we do this, we'll, until you have 
do things. You yeah, can't if you can learn those representations, and you could, you could definitely program. We don't have that model. See, we we don't have, have that model right now, but yeah, yeah like so many people have that full functionality. You can't compare it. <laughs> yeah, and since you can't say everything, you will do this model. And yeah. you have it. How can you do that? So so we, no, that is very see reflex modeling. No, no, is not very about reflex. It's one program, right? No, yeah. not about reflex. I'm saying in anything until you have that both fully functional things, you can't just compare it. You can't just say that I will implement this. I will implement that. Yeah, but will uh, we would like to implement things that we want, not something that we don't want. We don't want more complex machines to be in this world that are impeding humans and at each and every step like other humans. Another so, uh, very important layer would be, you know, we have, our intelligence is basically biology induced. So our neurons through, its, through their lifetime, they, they exhibit this which are called neuroplasticity or synaptic plasticity. So they expand and also they reproduce the neurons. And this reproduction and uh, elasticity brings about the cognition, the cognitive layer, and also the perceptual layer of our mind, our thoughts. So now, even there is this idea uh, last time, Dr. Shari, you shared called fractopresis. So these guys they are working on, you know, exactly, you know, identifying what this biological intelligence is and trying to model. So it all goes down to understanding what is this biological intelligence, where does this arise from. Then we can accurately model. So neuroplastic stuff like neurogenesis, neuroplasticity. So the molecular, you know, background of our intelligence. I don't, think, I don't, I don't think it will ever be modern. You know, yeah. we have stuff called imagination machines. All yeah, yeah, the thing though. Why, why can't you argue that um, at the end of the day, what matters is the external behavior? So let's distinguish between something like a state of your mind, something that happens in your brain, your intention, your bias, or, and then something like what actually you do that is observable, right? I mean, in your brain, you may have an anger towards somebody, but it may not be at all observable yet. And then at some point, you are angry enough to act out in some way, like having a sharp word or whatever, right? That, that is observable. So there's part that is not observable, there's part that is observable. What if I, you know, reframe the question saying, can't I make a computer do everything a brain does? That is roughly equivalent to what the brain would have done. And, and hence, I would say, you know, um, brain is a computer because uh, I my mean, computer can do what brain does. It may not necessarily, it, it may or may not, we, we don't know many things that maybe in our brain we don't necessarily we, we can't necessarily explain, we can't necessarily put down, we can't label everything. Even if you label it, actually it's a natural language which is, uh, can be interpreted differently. There's no 100%, you know, you, you are approximating what's, what's happening in your brain or your thought process through natural language. And, and, and not just natural language, but my, I'm moving my hands and collectively you are, uh, you know, getting some sense of what I'm trying to do. It's still an approximation of what's happening. It's never going to be exactly the same as what's happening in your brain. Your brain may be talking about two things in the mind, but saying only one thing of what is your brain is talking, you know, right now. You know, even though my brain is start currently talking, you know, thinking about other things, I'm, I can force myself to, you know, communicate about only one thing. But the point here is that what I'm saying is observable. What I, you know, what I'm hearing and then what I'm saying is observable. What if I can have machines do that? Now what? Uh, then we have, have we reached, uh, um, you know, because if that is what it is, then I can replace a human and I can, you know, uh, buy a machine. I think it is not possible in the sense, if you are arguing that what is coming out, what is observable is, can only be used as the way to compare the two. If machine gives out the exact same thing as a human, if you are arguing that then we can say it's same, if that is the argument. Uh, there's a small argument of Chinese room theory of John Searle. So he says there's a man in a room, English speaking, he's given instructions in English, and he has symbols, Chinese symbols, and uh, 
because he has given instructions in English, he could manipulate the symbols, and people are outside, Chinese people, and they can ask a question mm. because the instructions are given in English. Mm. He can uh, create a, a solution, let's say, and under the door he can pass it out. Mm. The people outside, they will predict that this is a Chinese man inside. So would that be a good argument to say that the man is Chinese? He has given instructions like a computer machine, like a programming language. Has given instruction, given input, and if you are trying to compare it based on the output, you would say yes. But if you argue on the understanding, I would say no. No, but even humans are deceived uh, into thinking that uh, this guy is Chinese. And uh, so if machine is deceived, so what? What I'm saying is, based on the output only, if you are trying to compare, then there's a problem. You're not taking into account what is actually happening. Yeah, if you... If you, if you actually remove that and look at the output only, then your argument might be correct. But no, but the deception is uh, in either way possible to replicate in machine as well as it is possible to you know do it when there is a human involved. As a label that you are using uh, that this person is uh, English <coughs> and, and uh, you know, I'll label that way. Uh, in reality it's English but uh, other people think of it as a Chinese because of the observation. That's fine. What, what is there that I cannot replicate in uh, machines? The argument is you cannot In reality is not the case, that's fine. Uh, it says you cannot That's fine, but those are, you know, that doesn't that's fundamentally change, uh, you know, whether you work with 10 times data or 1000 times of data, but you can do it in the same, I think then uh, uh, there's still a possible argument. Right? Um, it's like, 
you know, okay, maybe this is, uh, we are not working, worried about the cost here, or we're not worried, which will come down anyway for the machines. So that's not what we are worried about, right? Uh, okay, uh, those are adverts, let's go. Okay, so because um, right before that we talked about the mirror neurons that could do the simulations in brains, and because of this simulation, we humans can explain the causation. So for example, this chart, um, it's published in the New England Journal of Medicine. This chart shows that the chocolate consumption of each country, and this is the Nobel Laureate per 10 million population. So this shows that the more chocolate you consume in a country population, the more Nobel Laureates they have <laughs> of a country. So, and this shows that um, the correlation is 0.791, which is quite significant, but we human, when we look at this chart, we would we would laugh at it. We would know that okay, this is like not impossible. But can a computer explain that? Because computer is very good in finding correlation, but can computer explain something that makes sense? Uh, you're going to something. Did you look at the keynote on causation? It, uh, uh, AI, right? There was this keynote on causation. Did you see that? So, I mean, it's a very difficult job, very yeah. difficult thing even for anybody to express. Even for humans, it is very difficult. So forget about it. I don't think that will... Uh, I think from what I learned was uh, that uh, humans have really not figured out the challenge of causation. Forget about machine doing it. So no, neither of us are too good. Neither of them too good. But, you know, I mean, it's possible that computers figure out that uh, uh, this is about causation doesn't mean that, uh, you know, uh, Correlation, that doesn't mean that there will be always correlation. Computers can be taught that. Mm. Then say, so, okay, this is chocolate, but then let's see, maybe there is another one that says um, a similar charge that shows up with regards to the level of education. Yeah. And so it may be that that is the cause. Similar char you know, charge goes up with regards to the investment in education or, you know, investment in science and uh, technology or investment in whatever those things are, right? So invest in, or, or, or there are other measures of human development index. And uh, the same may be there, true for human development index. Right? So, and it's not chocolate, but it's other things that are, so there are multiple things that are the same things. And yeah. that can be done by computers as much as you want to do. So, so that is our uh, point that, uh, uh, of course, uh, 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 humans, as humans, we are thinking that maybe there are other charts like this. And maybe there are other Why do you think companies can't think that? So, but but uh, for this particular question, we just laughed. Everyone here laughed. But mm -hmm. uh, a computer will s directly say yes. Why? No, no. no I don't see why. Mm -hmm. If you do, if you if you train computer correctly and uh, given this uh, appropriate knowledge that we humans have gotten to be able to, you know, uh, come up to to, to to be able to react the way we did, uh, computers may also do the same. So you are assuming computer to be too uh, naive. Yeah, but the computer looks like the number, right? Not necessarily. The number. So, they would be tricked. That's not how simple the computers are anymore. So then we will have to uh, train the model saying that chocolate might not be a major contributing factor, whereas education might be a major contributing factor. Well, you will we'll, we'll have a theory, computers that uh, given to, that you, we humans have said that computers will be given, that all the correlations are not correlations. So yeah, I think Dr. Yeah. point is like, suppose if you show the same chat to a kid, who doesn't have knowledge about uh, education and all. He will say, yeah, chocolate is the reason. Yes. The same thing like we are saying like computer. Computer will say, oh, yes, chocolate is the reason. But yes. the way we have learned that chocolate cannot be the reason, education other factor. Doctor is saying, if we give the same knowledge to a computer, then computer does the same. So uh, that's the point. Then how oh. do you make the computer learn Sorry. which uh, which uh, knowledge given uh, is more relevant in which kind of decision making? So that depends on your own uh, mind. Maybe a kid brain is thinking that, okay, yeah, chocolate might be a contributing factor. But an adult brain, uh, you can argue that has more knowledge. And an adult brain can argue that uh, there are other contributing factors, right? So you don't think that chocolate has uh, any factors? <laughs> if you're happy, you would be creative. Yeah. 
you just mentioned that. So then you, you have to say whether eating chocolate makes you happy or something else, eating something else makes you happy, right? So uh, the correlation question there is a point nine in this case, right? <coughs> uh, you just said it's point nine. So another thing is, I um, want to say that the human is also curious because when they, when we are simulating a situation, our brain, when there is uncertainty in the simulation, then it makes the humans curious and the, it makes the humans go to explore. Right, because if they have uncertainty, they will make some hypothesis, and then they will go to explore and confirm the hypothesis or deny the hypothesis. But can computers be programmed with curiosity to go to explore and improve themselves? And and if yes, then in what uh, areas are they curious in? So can we program computers uh, for that? But you know what? Just one thing. <laughs> so, so there are actually like very, very uh, fuzzy relationships between things, right? So sometimes even a human cannot say that this is logical consequence of, of events, right? That led to this thing. But in reality, it might have, right? So it's our lack of knowledge too, as a humans. We need to do research. We need to understand more. We have. We need to have better mathematical models of problems so we can reach to good conclusions. Exactly the same as a computer. And this is what I'm gonna argue about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so right now we talk about how AI is built. Mm, if we look at the deep learning, the building block of deep learning is the perceptron. And this perceptron is actually is inspired by the behavior of neurons in brain. So it's just perceptron, but recently the research found that actually in our brain there's another cells that lead to our thinking and imagination, and that cell is called glial cells. And these glial cells first is just identified as the glue, the glue, the cells that stick, that makes the neurons stick to their place. But as right now they found that you know these glial cells could be the cause of our imaginations. So the question is that how what is glial cells equivalent in AI? Because in AI we only model based on the perceptron, but we don't model based on the glial cells. So if if glial cells causes the imagination, how can a machine ever have an imagination with neurons being modeled as the first element? Because right now we only have neurons but we don't model the glial cells in our and without being able to imagine, how can we argue that computer is human-like? So even in Albert Einstein, he acknowledged the importance of imagination and knowledge. And even in the triple AI, the process, the triple AI, there is a new challenge that called imagination machines to teach the machines how to be imaginative. So this is all. Arguments. Yeah. Yeah. For this uh, particular presentations, we have referred to these uh, sources. Thank you. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I'm going. To